All right, uh, I'll explain how this session is going to proceed. Uh, we'll have two segments. Uh, one, the first segment is our presenter is going to present. And uh, following that, there will be Q&A session in which you, our participants, are encouraged to ask your pressing questions. Uh, you can ask your question using a platform called Slido. Uh, I'll, I'll share the link on the group, on the, on the Zoom chat, yeah. You can ask your question using the, this platform that I just sent. And in Slido, you can write your question anonymously and it, you can also upvote questions. And upvoted questions will be, upvoted que questions will be given priority when, when answered. Uh, you can ask your question while the presentation is going on and our presenter would, is going to answer them once he finishes his presentation. And uh, I'll repeat, uh, please change your Zoom name into your student ID and, and your, your, your full name if you're Kaistian and if you're not, just your full name. So without further ado, let's proceed to the main presentation. I'll give a chance to Dennis Kroshev. You can proceed. Okay, thank you. Just a second. Okay, do you see the presentation? Yes. All right. Hi everyone, my name is Dennis and I am from Department of Aerospace Engineering in KAIST. And today I'm gonna present why, like, what is the aerospace engineering department and why you should join it? And well, there are a few reasons why you should join it. First of all, it's after graduation, especially after grad school. It's one of the highest paying jobs in, in the market today compared to like software engineering or petroleum engineering. Also, it's in high demand, as you know, by nice marketing strategies by Elon Musk or other new space corporations, it's quite popular to join the aerospace engineering. Also, after you finish your studies, you're going to construct different rockets, airplanes, whatever suits your purpose, which can fly or cannot, for example, like electronics inside of it. And it coexists well with other majors. As I mentioned here, uh, industrial design department. For example, I know several people from industrial design from other universities who later went to work for Airbus to make chairs and inner design of plane. And chemical engineering can work on fuel systems, for instance. Plus, it's very interesting department because it, you, it is highly specialized and all of its courses are taught entirely in English. Uh, after graduation, there are several various paths you can join for job prospects. The most essential ones in most countries of the world are actually government agencies like NASA, CARI, Roscosmos, or other. Uh, if you are seeking for higher level, like PhD, then you can certainly join private and public research institutes. And private companies are usually designed as new space or old space, depending on if they were created in 20th or 21st century. However, you should keep in mind that if you are not from first world countries like United States, European Union countries or Australia, it might be quite harsh to find a job in, like in particular sector due to ITAR regulations. And uh, since this is very specialized, um, specialized field, you might need master's degree or PhD to work on senior positions. Although sometimes it is replaceable with few years of a uh, few years of work. Also, if you do not feel like working in aerospace or you can't find a job initially, you can always join other fields like automotive industry, robotics, software, or design. For instance, NASCAR uh, and Formula One engineers, uh, almost a quarter of Formula One engineers were from aerospace department in uh, Milan University. And uh, also you can always join the NASA GPO lab because it doesn't require citizenship of any particular country. Um, and finally, you can join smaller startups that are not mentioned on uh, any listings, and you can find them through LinkedIn, Glassdoor, or any other website. 
In terms of career, as I mentioned, there are three ways that you can follow. It's uh, further into master's and eventually PhD. And in that case, you should choose the country where you want to work afterwards because it will be easier visa-wise. And also it highly depends on your research interests. So when you're joining graduate school, it doesn't really matter what ranking you're having. It's more about the particular interest and professors. And for instance, KAIST is very well known among propulsion, hypersonics, and numerical combustion research. So in case you want to research it further on, you can stay in KAIST for a master's degree as well. And for internships, it really is hard to find one when you are in the aerospace department because of aforementioned ITAR restrictions, as well as the lack of companies that take students for the job. So instead you can join drone or software engineering startups and gain experience easily there and then join larger companies. And finally, you can always join labs to get research experience and sometimes even hands-on experience like in wind tunnel research or in rocket lab. And I will mention them later on in some slides as well. Also, mechanical engineering and electrical engineering are quite similar in some topics to aerospace. So they have joint research and you can join it as well. Well, now let's move to pros and cons. And for those who don't want to read all of them, I can just sum them up as like aerospace engineering is specialized and it's for both blessing and a curse for it. It's blessing because you earn much more money after graduation because it, it is specialized. There are far less people, so you can focus, uh, professors can focus on your particular problems more. And uh, well, you get more profound understanding of let's say aerodynamics or structures or whatever else compared to mechanical engineering. And uh, in KAIST itself, there are a lot of extracurricular activities on the department that are held entirely in English. For example, three weeks ago, I had a seminar about parallel computing on Linux with aerospace engineering topics. And guest lectures from Stanford or MIT professors also take place like two, maybe three times a semester. And some courses have even few trips to CARI or private companies in different cities around the John. And moving to cons is, well, again, it is very specialized, which means it has very steep learning curve. So in very short time span, you need to learn lots of advanced mathematics and physical concepts. And not everyone is capable of doing so. And it's quite restrictive after graduation as well in terms of job prospects. And well, the need to find a job if, as at all because sometimes people just go straight to grad school. And yeah, aerospace is basically a mechanical engineering with extra steps because it just covers very specific kind of knowledge that mechanical engineering broadly covers like thermodynamics, structures, and aerodynamics. And uh, moving more closer to KAIST Aerospace Department, I can say that they teach pretty good quality courses and a lot of them are practice related. And as you can see on pictures on the right, these were my projects on introductory courses. So you can imagine ad how advanced project would look like. And uh, some of them utilize quite new system called EDU 4.0, which is basically a self-learning and uh, higher level of interaction between students to achieve particular projects or presentations. Also, some professors, especially in advanced courses, provide supplementary materials for further reading, like papers on the given subject, articles or uh, different research 
and uh, all professors in the department speak quite good level of English because, well, they studied and even worked in industry or research in Western countries like uh, Germany, Great Britain, or United States. For example, from my interest of propulsion, Professor Kyuta Kim worked for General Electric, uh, if I remember correctly, from in Great Britain on research and development of turboshaft engines. Also, since the department is quite small, it is very easy to establish connections with both professors and their teaching assistants, which is very helpful after graduation to find a job through connections, uh, to join a lab during your studies, and well, just to get to know other people and well, hang out with them. And by agenda of aerospace engineering in KAIST, there are five main fields. It's space systems, information and intelligence, airborne vehicles, propulsion, and aerodynamics and structures. And main research topics are provided here on the chart. You can read them right now as well. Uh, and there is an interesting concept in KAIST about undergraduate research participation. And it means that undergraduate students can participate in lab during uh, one summer, uh, summer fall or winter spring semesters in research on partic particular topic. It can either be creative when you make it up yourself or something from the current research interest of this lab. And from the last year and this year, uh, some of the topics were like bio-inspired flight, uh, uh, utilize, utilization of machine learning for trajectory prediction, or computational fluid dynamics for flow phenomena. And since I already made some mistakes, I must give some advice on it. For example, most professors do not allow you to do URP without joining their lab first. So you should write to the professor and like interact with them and possibly join individual research or the lab itself beforehand. After that, you can join the URP project and well, add it to your CV later on. And also I recommend you to leave your fourth or well, who knows, maybe fifth year of your studies a bit free so you can spend more time on research and uh, applying for grad school. It's not only will improve your hands-on experience, it will also get you some juicy remarks on your CV that will benefit you in front of HR in the future. And there are a lot, quite a lot of labs on, in the aerospace engineering department, at least at least three or four for each of the respective field of interest. And in the bold script, I mentioned those that have um, that hire international students for for their lab or have some sort of URP program that is English friendly. For instance, from my point of interest, the rocket lab and combustion modeling were quite an interesting research because it gives profound knowledge for MATLAB and hands-on experience with using rapid assembly and uh, SOLIDWORKS. But well, some, some newer labs are opening almost like once in a few years, I think, because recently the gas dynamics lab has been opened and new professor invited. So we, in future, it, there will be far more research and opportunities for students to participate in. In terms of assignments, it's uh, both good and bad. So it's very good because mostly it's just plain homeworks from the textbook. It's like three to five problems per one homework. However, during the semester, it can be up to eight homeworks on the course. And if you are taking a lot of courses, like, like five or six, it will be quite tough to manage it well. Uh, some courses, instead of having the final exams, prefer making final projects. 
uh, especially it is applicable for design or software engineering courses. And these are done in pairs or smaller groups of people for easier management. Uh, usually it has two, maybe three reviews where a professor listens to your presentation, gives remarks, and you progress along with it. And then you submit your final report. And I strictly recommend you after finishing your project to keep all the materials, photos, graphs, whatever you made during it. So you can join it for your portfolio or CV later, since it's well, it's project experience. And uh, compared to general physics or general chemistry labs that are taught during your first year, lab reports on lab courses in aerospace departments are very easy, I must say. So they don't have strict requirements. You don't need to write them on paper. Basically, you, you can type it. And uh, well, it gives more understanding of the topic because you need to use MATLAB or other programming languages for analysis. And uh, most of the exams on the course are closed book with some exceptions. Like EDU 4.0 courses are usually open books where you have either cheat sheet or an entire book for your work. Uh, while some courses, especially during COVID times, were held in a open book and take home format. So it will be uh, mostly design related problems that might, might take up, up to half a day, maybe even a day of constant work on it. And uh, now I would say, I would tell you about the possible schedule of the courses that you can take and an example of my take for it. So uh, I'm interested in propulsion engineering, which is mainly about the engines, how they work and what sort of fuel and why you should use in particular, uh, in particular application. And it is quite easy to take in your first year thermodynamics course because it is taught in EDU 4.0 system. So it is it also not only gives you present presentation skills, it also gives you a basis understanding of thermodynamics, which is useful in almost all the courses later on. And sky and space is quite general course for those who are still not sure if they want to join the aerospace engineering department. So it's it basically gives you understanding what is it and well what you can do in the department at all. Introductory aerospace projects and uh, introductory space projects are well it's project related courses which I highly encourage you to take because they give you a hands-on experience on uh, development of either satellite or aircraft and also on the construction of it as well. Uh, also in the both script, I a subscript, I mentioned the required courses that you need to take like one way or another before graduation. And software engineering is also quite a must take course because it teaches you the basics of MATLAB, uh, which is used in almost any sort of analysis in advanced courses because it's versatile tool, which can be replaced with Python, but well, most people don't. And uh, aerospace system design one and system design two are other advanced, rather advanced project related courses that cover more theoretical design of spacecraft or aircraft where you need to analyze it first with various formulas or concepts before actually making it or at least simulating it in SOLIDWORKS or any other numerical tool. And from more advanced courses and uh, well, non, not really uh, necessary courses, you can take understanding of rotor driven flights, if you, especially if you're interested in drones, helicopters uh, or anything which has uh, horizontally placed rotors uh, or well rocket system engineering for those who want to work in uh, actual all new space industry like SpaceX or Blue Origin because this course covers 
almost everything related to the design of rockets and especially the propulsion part of it. So engines and how it works in different conditions. And finally, for the fourth year, so basically, or fifth, if it's before your graduation, it is worth taking some individual research in the lab of your interest. Uh, and actually, you can take it during your summer or winter semester as well, if you haven't got any internship, because it will give you some sort of lab experience. And after taking this individual research, there is very high chance that the professor will let you join their lab with, well, all benefits, including pay. And before moving to frequently asked questions uh, area, I would, well, there are four questions that are often asked to both me in DMs or on Reddit about aerospace engineering, which is, first of all, what can I take aside from aerospace because it's highly specialized? And mostly people take either computer science because it's so widespread nowadays or electrical engineering, especially if you're going to make different electronics like inner parts for drones, missiles, or even rockets. And uh, mechanical engineering is very similar to aerospace. So many people take it as well to get broad understanding of the subject. And industrial design, nuclear, quantum engineering or chemical engineering is kind of specialized and it's more about your interests. For instance, design can be used, industrial design can be used for design of inner parts of aircraft or its overall looks. While nuclear propulsion can be, uh, nuclear quantum engineering can be used for advanced propulsion in graduate school. And another question often asked is, what can I do if I am a foreigner in CAIS? How to fill up the CV before graduation? Because, well, I faced this problem that up until my third year, I couldn't find any good internship in the field because, well, there aren't that many in Korea or in the world for foreigners. So mostly you can make individual projects or lab work. For instance, I made FPV drone and I worked a lot on MATLAB projects that uh, give you understanding of the topic and, well, some ideas of what to do later in your career. Also, you can do up to two ERPs during your studies. So it's also worth the shot because if, you, if your ERP is interesting for your advisor slash teaching assistant, you might also write a paper on it. And if it's submitted, it is also a good addition for your graduate school. And there are quite a lot of startups, even in Korea, at least I know like six, maybe seven, that work in aerospace related fields and you can try to join them as well. And before joining aerospace department, some people wonder uh, like what to learn to get some head start compared to other students. And well, it's worth learning some differential equations or linear algebra basics because it is covered heavily on software engineering courses, especially uh, if you need some optimization. Um, MATLAB, Python, or Jupyter are of, often used for analysis, especially numeric, of different applications for your aircraft. And from design side, I mostly use SOLIDWORKS for designing aircraft or, well, satellite for a group project. So you can learn it as well. It's quite easy. And if you want to work in some, if you want to get some additional points for your future job, you can learn some advanced programming like on C or Fortran, which, is, which uses legacy code in old space companies. Uh, because it is a well-known fact that a lots of lots of missiles and even some parts of the codes on Falcon 9 rockets were written utilizing Fortran. And uh, well, there are quite a few clubs in uh, CAIS that are useful for aerospace engineering students as well. So you can join basically any 
engineering club. I mentioned few of them that are working on uh, aut automation or rocketry. Like Hanul X is rocketry team, and Julie Drew, they're making cars right near to their building. Star Flower is for those who like astronomy and, well, yeah, it's basically amateur astronomy. So it's more of interest in space in general. And there are no particular requirements for taking clubs. So whatever suits your purpose well, might do as well, because all of them have certain connections. And joining different clubs will, might also get you ideas of how to do your further research or who with or like what to do later on. And if you have any further questions, feel free to ask them. Uh, thank you, Dennis, for your awesome presentation. Uh, as for now, we don't have any question in in Slido, but if anyone has question, you can hop on and ask Dennis right now. Uh, if you don't feel comfortable speaking, you can type it on the chats. And you can refer to this, <clears throat> this meeting is being recorded and you can refer to it later on our YouTube channel and more general information would be available on this link. Also, you can write to my DM or to email if you'd have further questions or if you need help with CV or whatever else related to the department. So there yeah, is there it is. <clears throat> uh, just a second. So our space engineering has its own website. Yeah, this one. All right, uh, if you have any question, you can still write it on the chat or you can speak up. We're gonna wait uh, one or two minutes if there is any question. Thank you, Dennis, for your awesome presentation. Uh, I hope everyone had a very insightful session. Uh, thank you, everyone, for coming. Uh, I'll, I'm going to end the meeting right now. Bye. Thank you for coming. All right.